This is one of the many interesting sections of the famous old port of London, where the Thames River is flanked by such historic landmarks as the Tower of London and the Tower Bridge, the twin bascules of which are constantly raised and lowered to accommodate an endless procession of boat and vehicular traffic. The Port of London comprises 150 miles of industrialized river bank and 700 acres of enclosed dock water. 27 bridges span the river, and practically every one of them has inspired at least a chapter in the enthralling story of Father Thames. The value in incoming and outgoing goods totals about $3 billion a year. Perhaps the oldest monument to be seen along the river is the so-called Cleopatra's Needle, an Egyptian granite obelisk, originally erected near Cairo about 1,500 years before Christ. Far beyond the port of London, in the vicinity of Oxford, the Thames loses its busy commercial atmosphere and takes on a more tranquil mood, which is ideal for swimming, fishing, and boating, while organized cruises provide an excellent medium for seeing some of the most picturesque places along the river. Reminiscent of a more leisurely age are the numerous locks through which all boats must pass in navigating the upper part of the Thames. In one stretch of 136 miles, where the fall of the river is about 200 feet, there are 49 locks, and most of them are operated exactly as they have been for the past 100 years or more. Many of the locks have been in the care of the same families for generations and they seem to take particular pride in adorning them with colorful little flower gardens, such as we see here. Even the ancient Romans made dams to keep their boats floating when they navigated the Thames. The beautiful swans which are seen along the river's course are known as the royal birds because by tradition, only the king and the vintners and dyers' companies enjoy the privilege of marking and keeping swans on the River Thames. When Englishmen in far-flung places of the British Empire dream of home sweet home, not a few of them are thinking of cottages like this. Along with the work that man has done to beautify the banks of the Thames, Mother Nature contributes her share with prolific growths of colorful wildflowers. The river is said to be well stocked with fish, such as roach, bleak, and perch, but apparently they weren't biting on the day of our visit. Most of the fishermen, however, seem content to sit peacefully on the banks of the stream in simple communion with Mother Nature. this earth has been more instrumental in molding the course of a people's destiny than the Thames, which has been referred to as the liquid history of England. Like an artery of life, it has flown for ages along its 215-mile course, watering the land and providing the means of navigation and trade, as well as pleasure for a sizable portion of England's population. The students of Oxford and Eton have always taken full advantage of the proximity of the Thames for the ever popular sport of rowing. At Eton College, where rowing vies with cricket in sport, the rowers are called wet bobs and the cricketers are known as dry bobs.
We are now at the Henley Regatta, one of the most popular events in the British Isles, during which thousands of sport-loving fans turn out in a spirit of unrestrained gaiety. But the natural diversions of the Thames are not limited to any special events. And when the weather is ideal, especially on Sundays and holidays, the river presents a colorful pageant of simple recreation seemingly enjoyed by all classes among the outdoor-loving people of England. Most of the people appear to confine their diversions to the main river. Not a few of them prefer the little side streams that flow into or out of the Thames. Among the famous old landmarks that may be visited within the vicinity of the river, is one that will be particularly remembered by the American GIs who were stationed near Oxford during the World War. And it is known as the Trout Inn. Aside from modern soldiers and civilians, this sequestered old hostelry has opened and closed its doors to the students of Oxford for generations. And on this particular occasion, it is your narrator's pleasure to quaff a mug of old English ale with the landlady herself. Incidentally, our day on this grand old river inspired us to compose a simple little tune, which we have made the music theme of this subject. And we humbly dedicate it now to old Father Thames as the Thames Waltz. fascinating reflections of our boat bestir the so-called liquid history of England. We most reluctantly say farewell to the Thames. 